Hi, welcome to another edition of Cambridge Inside Out, the greatest show on television ever. <laughs> My name is Robert Winters. And I'm Judy Nathans. And today's the day after the first presidential debate, September 27th, 1916. No, <laughs> oh, well, did you do that on purpose? Excuse me, 1865. Yeah, right. Stephen Douglas was great last night. Yes, and, yes, uh, <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, oh, no. Oh, my God. Um, just, just kidding. Um, so let's see. So what's happening around town? We were, we were off last week. For a good reason. Uh, that's right. It was, uh, uh, we'll talk some more about that. Definitely. Yeah. Is, uh, the, when we last met, we didn't know who the candidates, the finalists were who were the city manager right. position. Uh, and now we do. And we've mm -hmm. actually, last week we took off so that we could actually attend the public meeting. Special meeting at the high school. Uh, that's right. And it'll be more about that. Uh, so we'll get to that, <clears> but you know, just to sort of stay on cue here. Uh, one of the things, um, this past week it was kind of fun. It was two kind of great local traditions. One was the Cambridge Bicycle Committee puts together their twice a year in the spring and in the fall they do a bicycle rides sort of around town, you know, with police escorts, it's a lot of fun. That's what makes it fun. Yeah. You don't have to so, stop at a light. So yesterday was the bow tie <laughs> ride, you know, because Cambridge is shit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sunday, excuse me. Right. Cambridge is shaped like a bow tie, so right. we do the bow tie ride. Uh, and the, the other one they do with the other part of the year is usually thematic, like, you know, ah, homes of So the bow tie ride isn't thematic. No, it's just, it's a, just a bow tie yeah. ride. Okay. Sometimes we do things that are focused on transportation right. or right. musical history or great authors. Yes. Or, well, I did a bunch of presentations on one on political history. Yes, I went to that one. Yes, that was a lot of fun. I uh, heard it was just John Goodman's time. last uh, ride, or that it last leading it. Is oh, really? True? Oh, um, you didn't read I that? didn't hear that, but it yeah. could be so. He's on the bicycle. Uh, but movie. it was fun. A little slow. I'm They're little... always slow, Robert. I know. My little, my advice to the Cambridge Bicycle Committee is make it like one mile per hour faster, so well, that we're not breaking. Well, I think they need to limit the six-year-olds that are on bikes with yeah. their parents because that does make it slower. Yeah. Well, we are just spread spread people out a little bit, you know. Yeah. But, it was, okay. but it was fun. You know, always fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was a good time. Um, and as we mentioned yesterday, uh, not yesterday, uh, Monday. No, yesterday, Monday, 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 Monday was, uh, yesterday. was, <laughs> was big, uh, momentous city council meeting as well as the last of, uh, regular meeting with Richard Rossi as city manager. Well, that's what made it momentous. That was probably what made it as momentous. What else as would anything. make that momentous? Uh, well, I don't think the fact that they were setting the tax rate would be considered momentous. Oh. but it is part of the order of business. And how often do they do that? Though uh, they do it every fall. Oh, they, so it's once pass, a year. Well, they pass the budget in the spring. Okay. And then they uh, they basically do all the necessary votes that ultimately leads to determination of the tax rates for residential tax rates and commercial tax rates. And there's always a hearing, a public hearing for it. So that took place on Monday. Can I say something? I, the, I did sort of listen to that, and it <clears> seemed <throat> that some of the counselors were saying they didn't have enough time to look at it. I mean, is that the first time they saw it? Uh, well, that they wanted a hearing before this of the finance committee. So what's well, here's that about? A, here's a little fact. Is okay, that, um, give me some facts. Fact is, is that the the document that comes out yeah. for this yeah. is basically pretty boilerplate. It's the same document every year. Okay. But some of the numbers are changed. Okay. Right. So if, in other words, if the I think they it was the, it. it was a citywide increase. This is sort of alarming, but in one mm -hmm. year, property mm -hmm. values on average went uh, up thirteen and a half percent. And, oh, yeah, that was, I know that was yeah. so. That's uh, basically what they're changing. Right. So right. Right. So what happens then is, since the property tax levy, the amount of money we that take allowed, from the right. businesses and the yeah. residents, that goes up a few percentage points. Uh, you don't basically keep the same tax rate and then cause because if you went up, if your property taxes. If your property value went up 13.5%, your tax bill would go up 13.5%. But they don't do that. No, what they do no. is they lower the tax rate. So there was a significant right. reduction in the tax rates so that more or less the increased value and in the right. lower tax rate balance out. So you pay just a little bit more. And some people complain that people that live in very expensive <clears throat> houses should be paying more in their property. Well, there was one city council who was definitely taking advantage yeah. of the opportunity to try and make the case that we should basically sock people for as much as we can get. Mm -hmm. uh, that same city councilor also said that we should increase the tax rate across the board, and then if somebody can prove that they're low income, we will grant them an abatement. Well, I thought there was already an abatement process. Well, well that councilor doesn't understand what an abatement is. An abatement is what you seek 
when uh, the city says they assessed your value at yeah, the wrong so -and -so level. And you feel like that's and you not you think fair. it's not correct. So, so everyone that, has a chance to do that. Yeah, so yeah. an abatement is really just a correction of an right. incorrect valuation. It has nothing to do it's with all individual a too, right? reduction based on income. So right. I mean, my interpretation of that whole discussion was that that particular council was basically arguing for there being uh, in, an indirect form of a local uh, income tax, hmm. though, though there is no provision yeah. to allow that, but I think yeah. that's kind of what he was angling for. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, I think most of us who actually homeowners uh, say, well, we're actually paying quite a bit. It's, it could be worse, but I don't think we're all together eager to be paying a ton more. Well, so. maybe not you, but you would be more middle class. Yeah, I'm, I'm very middle or, class. Or, I mean, uh, although ordinary. the property you have is probably worth more than... Yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's, 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 it's a well, strange thing about Cambridge. The thing that's very annoying House about rich, it is, cash is poor. you know, so if, if, if all the speculators in the world drive the uh, valuation of housing uh, or buildings in Cambridge mm -hmm. up through the roof, yeah. uh, then all that causes for people like me mm -hmm. uh, are increased tax bills. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not leaving. It's not like I'm going to be yeah. of any benefit from the increased yeah. valuation. But you can, always, you can always, I mean, if you had to, you can always refinance your property because it's worth something. So. Uh, yeah, I could no take, one's going to feel too you, sorry you for you. You can take cash out of it, but I was, yeah. I'm part of the, 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 yeah. the post-greatest generation that yeah. believes in paying off your mortgage as soon uh, as you can, yeah. and I did. That would, well, oh, so you're living mortgage-free. I got a mortgage. Free. I got a mortgage. I'm, I'm well, you're fine. Easy. So you just pay That's your it. you pay your yeah uh, yeah you pay yeah. your tax bill yeah. Cool. So anyway, uh, it's probably worth spending a little time speaking about this whole city manager search process, okay. wouldn't you say? Yeah. Do you want to not talk about the general? Do that later. The general. Well, the that big debate they had last. All night. right. Let's do that first. Yeah. Now I because I was so I'm such a local yokel. I spent my evening. In, uh, yeah. I thought they'd end by nine because I, I, I watched sugar. till ten to eight and then I went to my debate party. So. Yeah. There was one that was Too over bad. the tavern in the square. Uh, yeah. Was that the one you went to? Yes. And I was Hillary planning supporters. to go over there, yeah. but I was feeling a little tuckered out by the yeah. time things were over. It's kind of sad that no one really, even Denise and nobody really wanted to see the debate, or they just felt like this was business and um, tend to it. Actually, I, my understanding was that there was some plan to go and meet up with the outgoing city manager. Oh, uh, so that had already for, been prearranged. I think so. Yeah. I, um, it got a little delayed, but anyway, that was what I was Okay, hearing, right? all right, the, so they can always catch it later if they're yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Some of us are not as interested as some of us. <laughs> No, I was actually just a little too tired at the end. Sure, yeah. I staggered home last yeah, night. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and only caught a little bit on on the, um, a little bit, I think maybe the last 15 minutes was still on the television. Mm -hmm. It went to about 1040, yeah. You know, just caught some you know, sort of snipey stuff. At the end there, well, the thing about the stamina and about the women stuff. Ms. Yeah. Piggy, that, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I mean, all right, so we don't have to spend too much time, but it was certainly uh, an event and... Nice to be shared with yeah, and, fellow sporters. And, and for those who are unaware, um, it's probably worth noting that the next debate in the sequence is actually actually it's, the vice presidential debate, debate. And it's a week which from Which is Tuesday, today. October 4th. Right, a week from today. And then five days later is the second presidential debate right. on Sunday, October 9th. Right. I presume these are all in the evening. Yes, right? I think they all start at 9. Start at 9. Yeah. And then the third one uh, will be Wednesday, October 19th. Yes. So, yeah. So, anyway, stay tuned if you find yes. this interesting, or if you can, or even if you're the kind of person who's simply holds your nose uh, to these things. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is this has been kind of a annoying presidential yes. campaign. I mean, yes, I, it is. You know, it's and, true. Uh, you know, you kind of, I always wish that people will actually talk about things of consequence. Well, you know? some of them were. Some yeah. of them did, but... Well, I mean, the thing is, is, is you, you have to have two willing candidates who are willing to go there. All it takes is one that isn't candidate willing. who yeah. can... Or doesn't know what they're talking about. Yeah, right. ...to uh, okay. bring, the, bring right. things down to a pretty base level. Okay, so we'll remind you yeah. of all that again yeah. next week. So let's get on to our local... It's not really an election, but it's kind of... They have to vote. Yeah, it's actually arguably the vote, single... Right? People always say sort of uh, in a matter, you know, in a, uh, I don't know, formal way, they say the single most important thing that ca a Cambridge or a city councilor can do mm -hmm. under the Plan E charter is to 
choose a city manager. Mm -hmm. Once you choose the city manager, the manager is the chief executive for the city. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's some, something that doesn't happen very often. I mean, technically, the city manager serves at the pleasure of the city council. Mm -hmm. And the city council could, with five votes, dismiss a city manager on any given Monday night. Even though they have a contract, just pay them off or something. Yeah, you, you, like you do in football. Or unless there was some yeah. severance, okay. arra severance arrangements, right. the charter does say you do still serve at the pleasure. But uh, you would never be able to keep a good city manager if you didn't have some kind of contractual arrangement. Right. Can, you, can you refresh us on how many city managers you have known? Because you've been here the longest. Um, I think I met. Um, and how see, long they served? James Leo Sullivan only briefly. And he was before Bob Healy? Healy. And how long had he served? Uh, he was actually in two stints. Okay. Um, he actually got fired <gasps> by an incoming city council. And then you there kidding? was a movement to bring him back. And wow. I, I have a button that says suck him. Say it stands for save our city manager. Wow, when uh, was that? Uh, back in the 70s, I think. Interesting. And there was a big movement to do that. Wow. And, um, and then there was a, a subsequent change in the council, and they brought back James Leo Sullivan. Interesting. And his assistant, or deputy city Who manager, was, was Healy. Robert Healy. Okay. And so when James Leo Sullivan left, mm -hmm. uh, Rob, Robert W. Healy became the acting city manager for a portion of a year. Kind of like what Rossi did. Um, no, actually, no. Rossi, when well, Bob Well, was he acting left, and then was given a three-year contract? No, Richie was the deputy city manager for many years with Bob Healy. When right. Bob left, Richie became city manager, period. Oh. No, no acting about it. Oh, why could they do that? Well, I mean, the thing is, is that you, uh, the way it usually works, an acting city manager is usually somebody, could be the deputy city manager, could be a department okay. head, who just sort of rises, the city council says, well, we pick you to serve as So there was a unanimous manager. decision that Rossi would just take over. There yes. was no process yeah. involved. That vote was actually taken many, many months prior to Bob's he, exiting. And did he intend to only serve three years? Did he say, I'm probably going to retire so that they knew it wasn't going to be um, a long-term I don't know if he said that. I think there was an understanding that okay. it would be three years with okay. a possibility of some extension. Because he had been there how long? Uh, Under Healy? As acting city manager, almost no, no. pretty much as long, well, uh, as deputy city yeah, manager, deputy. he'd been there pretty much as long as Bob Healy was okay, city so manager. That, so that was a long 30 time. plus years. Is that unusual that Healy was there for so long? It was unprecedented. unprecedented. Yeah. In fact, it's it's kind of rare anywhere, not just in Cambridge. Cambridge is so never. Why do you think that happened with so many different councils coming? You know, up? when Bob Healy came in, city, uh, city of Cambridge was sort of uh, in junk bond status land. Wow. Uh, proposition two and a half had oh, been yeah. passed, if mm -hmm. I m remember correctly, mm -hmm. um, and it was not the best of times. So mm -hmm. Bob uh, showed himself to be a pretty good financial guy mm -hmm. from day one, and that's pretty much what secured his um, future. The financial. Um, the at the time, I mean, he yeah. was at. The, I believe my interpretation. He was seen as. A choice of the independence back when it was the independence in the CCA. Oh, right, true. So they were always some who were part of the Cambridge Civic Association right. who were trying to get him out of there. Huh. Not necessarily because they, they thought he was terrible, though some people did, hmm. um, but really because he wasn't their guy and they wanted to just put in their guy. Their guy. And they were never successful. Um, but I was there for all the votes when they tried to oust them. They How many want... times did they try? Multiple times. I couldn't say exactly, but Different I remember. Councils. The biggest, the most places. interesting one was in 1993, when that. there yeah. were the the CCA thought they had five votes to oust Bob Healy, uh, and then two of their endorsed councillors, uh, Ken Reeves and Ed Sear, changed their votes and voted to mm. stick with them. And what was the main complaint? And, and the CCA did a little payback in the next yeah. election. Ed Sear got quietly oh, dissed. Oh wow! He was still endorsed, but the, the yeah. whispering campaign pretty much drove him off the council. What was their and main? And Ken Reeves told yeah. the CCA to go screw eventually. Wow. So what was their main complaint against Healy? He was too. He wasn't their guy. He you know, wasn't, he wasn't their guy. I think it was yeah. really they wanted somebody who would act as an agent for, um, for one particular group. And I don't. I don't mean just the Cambridge Civic Association. Mm -hmm. it could just be their counselors, but they wanted their guy. I mean, I don't fault anybody for that. But um, but the fact is, is that. Bob was a pretty competent manager, and I thought it would be kind of ridiculous to get rid of a good, competent manager. Right. Shouldn't you have a city manager that has 
a little bit of distance from a city council instead of like their guy? Because isn't that the whole idea of having, it's almost like having two branches of government um, or not? Ultimately, you know, I think it's That's the, I the dilemma it. that city councilors, I think, are yeah. amongst many dilemmas. One yeah. is that the city manager, the city auditor, the city clerk are your, those are They're your technically. The only ones your, that they can. Your, your, yeah, you have three for. employees. They've okay. kind of expanded it a little bit okay. to deputy city clerks and whatever. But right. basically, it's three uh, positions clerk, under the charter. Auditor and city so, okay. so he's your employee, but he is the employer of everybody who works for the city. Right. So the, to me, one of the things you want to be very careful about, and this is very relevant right now, mm -hmm. is that when you choose a city manager, you are also choosing the person who will be the boss. For all those other people. Thousands of people. Right. And um, so you, you have to sort of at least be sensitive to what- And to sort of sit- They would like right. to. Stand back a little bit yeah. and say it's not just us. Yeah, I mean, this is, sometimes it, I get that feeling like you work for us and only us, and we're the we're. You the, know, on a Monday night yeah. when they're basically arguing policy positions, he works yeah. for the counselors. Right. But on Tuesday, the way I look at it, on Tuesday <laughs> through Sunday, this, he goes. Whew, right. Like, you know, like Hillary did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, now there's now there right. are some rules about you know this. Yeah. Like, there is actually an organization called the Inter. I think it's called the International City Managers Association. Oh, you mentioned that. Yeah. And uh, they're actually, there's kind of like a code for city managers to follow. One, the, one of the most important things is, is that if you're a city manager, you shouldn't uh, take a main center stage and draw, you should, if there's anything that's sort of going to yes. require the public face, let the elected officials do that. You sort of retreat to the background. Really? The that, big, that, that's what the, that's what they kind of teach yeah, you? Yeah, that's what you should do. But uh, hmm. in, when there's times of public emergency, then the manager, and maybe the manager and the mayor, have to step up yes. and be sort of, you know, safeguard More, the public okay. peace. And Has that and happened in role. your recent memory ever? Well, there have been incidents, you know, like uh, when there was the, sh uh, the murder of Sean Collier, right? At that oh, situation right. like that. You do oh, not want to have the nine whole, city councilors well, competing gosh, the for whole, attention. The, the bombers lived in Cambridge. Yeah, I mean, it would yeah. have been completely inappropriate for individual city councilors to be kind of okay. angling for position right. on who's going to speak for the so city. who was city manager then? Was it Healy? No, uh, it was Rossi? Uh, let's see, in 2013. 2013, it was early in the year. I think it was it had right Rossi, before the right? transition. It's only 16 it? right now. Yeah. No, I think it was. Oh. I think it was in the transition okay, period. Okay, so that's interesting. Right. Yeah. So the mayor has a role in a situation like that, mm -hmm. you know, sort of as the sort of symbolic right. head of state Ceremonial, in a way. Ceremonial, yeah. Uh, and the, as does the city manager, but that's a place where city councils should really kind of step aside. Hmm. They can be in the photo. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to be lecturing city councilors here, but in a way, you know, that's what you suppose your role as a city councilor is to be making policy, not to be kind of throwing yourself out in the midst of a crisis. Okay. Because what happens if you have different counselors taking different points of view? Right. Then it's it's, it's, it's a chaotic not a good message coordinated sent to effort. People. Right. Okay. Right. So anyway, so the oh. city council is on the verge of making this rather momentous decision as to who will succeed Richie Rossi. The decision is to be made, unless there is some impasse, but it is expected to be made this Thursday. Special meeting September at five thirty. September twenty ninth. That's right. And um, could you clarify, there was some discussion, is it just a vote? Is there discussion before the vote? Well, you know, the thing is, is no, there is no rule book about it, but I right. talked to David Marr, who's the chair of the Government right. Operations Committee. Before or on, after. Uh, I talked to him last we uh, Wednesday when they had the city council's meeting with right, the right. finalists. Yes. By the way, for those who don't know, hmm. the finalists are oh, right. Jay Ash, who uh, was the secretary of... Uh, is the secretary is the secretary of uh, um, economic development housing and economic development right for this commonwealth of massachusetts mm -hmm. um a fellow named paul featherston who is a deputy city manager in Asheville, north carolina oh, i thought he was the city manager is he only deputy i think he's deputy oh. right um huh. and uh and louis de pasquale who's uh, right, kind assistant. of the head of finance for the city of cambridge and has been for some time okay um i think it's fair to say that at the public meetings last week both the ones that was held at the library for the general public, as well as the ones at the city council. Um, Louis Di Pasquale is probably the one who kind of connected with people a bit more. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe because he has home field advantage. Yeah, born here, lived here, worked for the city since 1975. Right, definitely showed uh, 40 uh, years. all yeah. the necessary enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. I think most, it's fair to say most people also felt that Jay Ash was extremely qualified for the job. So he will certainly get some attention. But given what you were talking about, seemed to be he might be the kind of city manager that wanted well, I think, you know, a little I, bit more out front rather than in the back. Yeah, I mean, that's but, that's certainly one of the potential criticisms, is right. that, is that I mean, would I, he be the kind of manager that yeah. uh, would be the center of attention, Yeah, and maybe city councilors wouldn't would have necessarily a hard time want with that. that right. right. He's taller uh, than them, too, right. but that's, that's right. my own. <laughs> no, he's a very tall fellow. Very, uh, very charismatic, And the third candidate was yeah. fellow Paul Featherston, who I, yeah, I thought he nice was a guy, but nice that's guy. It. Nice and, guy. And Small I don't man. think he really connected with the audience no. at either of the meetings. Too academic. Um, kind of, yes, he said, you know, so he was thoughtful, yeah. to be sure. But I just don't think he really resonated with people. No. I, my read of it was that I thought that some of the activist community was going to rally around whoever was going to be the most prominent outsider. They didn't want an insider? Or yeah, that was your an thinking? An inside-outsider game, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, some people, rightly or wrongly, have this impression that uh, Bob Healy was in there for a long time, Rich Rossi was his deputy who stepped in, Louis De Pasquale is in the administration as well, working for Richie Rossi, so now he will step in. Right. And there's some who just would like to make a, an absolute clean break from everything. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will come right out and say I'm not of that point of view. Right. Uh, I just felt that Jay Ash and Louis De Pasquale were both really top-notch candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I may have a favorite in this one here, yeah. but... Uh, but the thing is, they were both just qualified candidates, regardless right. of whether they're inside or outside. Right. Um, well, Jay's probably a little bit more inside in that he, you know, grew up in Chelsea. Yeah. Works for the state. Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, not as outside as someone coming completely yeah. from a different uh, place. I watched it because we were at both at the same meeting there. I was watching yeah. who the activists were going to sort of cluster around yeah, at the at the that. conclusion. I didn't, yeah. Because uh, I kind of figured they're going to pick a, an outsider. So at first they gathered around Featherston, but then they kind of mm -hmm. gravitated to Ash. Um, but it was interesting because some of the more prominent activists have actually said, spoken pretty openly about their uh, fact that they like Louis de Pasquale. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I mean, I think the, the the odds are in favor of Louis getting getting the job. It seemed to be. But it's I not heard a lock. that the screening committee was unanimous. The nineteen that were. Yeah, chosen. yeah. Um, I don't know if it's unanimous, but I think he was probably the odds-on favorite. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the screening committee has to be a little careful in that some of there was a certain confident, confidentiality understanding, well, so they should be. Someone else then wasn't. I know. I know. People. Well, even last I mean, night even, at the council meeting, yeah. some of they were some people oh. were talking of giving general characteristics of some of the whole candidate pool. Which oh. was, but they weren't naming names, so I okay. guess that's confidential. Well, I guess uh, the big question someone, other people don't not, do not have the answer to, were there any other internal candidates? I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I don't I know didn't if we ever can it. find that out. Probably not. You know, the thing is, if, if, um, if somebody were to divulge that information, that might be getting a little too close to breaking confidentiality. What about afterwards? Uh, even afterwards, yeah, because I guess so. yeah. you know, if you yeah. were a person who was an internal candidate who was seeking it, but it's you didn't, true. And then you work in a department and That's you didn't want your boss to know. And good point. Good point. So it's supposed yeah. to be confidential, and I, they should stick to it. Now, you, did you go Wednesday? I watched it online. The, the Wednesday, went the Wednesday was Wednesday the meeting. presentation. They weren't that much different. The, the questions the were The questions different? were similar, but the but the thing is, yeah. is that in theory, all of the questions at the Wednesday were from meeting the counselors. came from the counselors. But you know, two of them were exactly alike. I could they, not believe they were that. The same. Yeah. Did you hear that one? Yeah. But in a, yeah. I, mean, I think I, there was some. Uh, it was a little bit ridiculous. There was some counselors. I think were coordinating with some of the right general oh. general public, so that the questions that were asked. But didn't the, they know what their fellow counselors were going to ask, so they no. would have a variety? They sh well, the, the thing is, they were submitted to the consultant firm. Well, then they should have I done think, a better job. Well, they could have weeded them out or got back to the All counselor right. well, and said, okay. maybe, the, well. maybe you could do a little bit better. But anyway, okay. the bottom line is, is that this is a decision that city councilors will make. We don't make it. Thursday, 5.30, special Thursday, meeting. Thursday, 5.30. Thursday, 5.30. be there, yeah. Um, there is some... Uh, oh, right, so you didn't answer that. Is there a discussion or not? 
What's supposed to happen is they're supposed to they're going to allow some public comment first. I really? hope that doesn't go on for too long because it'll be repetitive. But what's interesting is that they have not allowed public comment the other ones until the very end. At or the something. very end, and, yeah. And now they're allowing it when they've already probably made their decision. Right, and then the councilors they they said in theory they're going to kind of go around and people will make statements and then they will go okay. around and say who do you pick. Oh, um, so statements, not a discussion amongst I, you people. Know, well, that makes sense. I, yeah. Honestly, I would be much yeah. happier if they allowed some public testimony and then just voted. But um, I want to hear their statements, actually. They want to give their statements well, because I hear it. they're selling themselves as much as they are doing anything. Yeah, but I want to hear why they're choosing who they are. Right. Um, I think there's a certain amount of gamesmanship that's involved sure. in that. Yeah. Um, you know, as you might expect before any vote in any legislative body. Um, ultimately, the, my question I asked um, David Marr about this on uh, last Wednesday was what would happen if there was, a, let's say, a four to three to two vote for, amongst the three candidates? Oh, yeah. Unlikely. Or a it three could be. to yeah. three to three. So there's no majority. I mean, I, I think there'll probably be at least five votes for one yeah. candidate, but yeah. if, if it were not to be a, a majority yeah. and you need a majority, What's the process? what do you do next? Yeah. Right. And uh, I think that's something that either David Marr as chair of the Government Operations Committee or Denise Simmons as mayor, yeah. who I imagine be chairing this special meeting, yeah. uh, needs to be clear about is if there were to be a deadlock, mm -hmm. what happens? Right. Do you just ballot again like they do for so you, mayor? So you don't know, actually. They didn't tell you. There's no rule book. There's no rule book. Um, so they, they, you know, they can make yeah. it up uh, as they go. Why isn't it a secret ballot? Uh, I think it's... Uh, um, Why should we... Uh, isn't that kind of uncomfortable? Uh, it may be uncomfortable, but I think there might be... There's a actually, law about know, that? I don't know if there is a law about that. I think it might actually be in the charter that they have to... Is it from when they appoint the mayor, isn't that secret? Uh, no. Oh, it it's isn't? totally public. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. So I think by tradition it's totally public, okay. but I think it's best totally public. All right. Uh, and, you know... And, and we'll see. Maybe, you know, let's say it ends up as like six to three. Do the other three then all make it unanimous? Oh, business? right. That, that anyway, happen. we're going to have to split for three whole and, minutes and now. And we can come back. And we come uh, back and talk uh, about other stuff. So see you then. And maybe continue. Bye.